Hi, good morning and good evening. I hope you had a great 2021 and wish you all a very happy new year. Continuing on my commitment to sharing anything interesting I tried or learned something new, I have come up with a new video on machine learning with uh, uh, Vodic AI. The motivation for doing this goes back two decades. As a CS student, I had a neural network in pathological selective and our project was on face recognition system using a dimension reduction algorithm called principal component analysis of PCA. Although the results were very promising, it involved heavy mathematical modeling, a lot of MATLAB library based coding and uh, good processing for matrix multiplication and other equations. So I decided to replicate some aspects of this project with almost uh, no coding with uh, Vodix AI. Now let's see how far we go with it. The goals for today is to develop a multivariate face image classification model using AutoMO, train, test, and analyze the model as an API uh, endpoint for synchronous calls. We'll also do a batch prediction uh, for async calls. Almost two decades back, Yale University published a face database, which was very practical because it was small, six and a half MB. It had 15 different people with 10 to 11 different expressions for each person. So that constitutes uh, a total of 165 grayscale images. Uh, an example of that you can see here, um, sad faces, winking faces, normal and, uh, and surprised faces. So each subject is numbered from 0 to 15 and we are going to use uh, 10 subjects and each of those subjects are going to have uh, 10 to 11 different expression. So the job is basically to use this data set to create a model and then uh, supply an expression or a face image which is unknown to see how best it recognizes or make a prediction around the success of uh, the model. To accomplish our task, we will use Vertex AI. Vertex AI is GCP's uh, unified AI platform. So this is a one-stop shop for both business users and developers um, where they can quickly develop uh, complex machine learning models step is to acquire the Yale face database and then uh, do a little bit of pre-processing and then later put it into a place within GCP which is accessible to Vertex AI and that is going to be cloud storage. So this is the root folder of the repository. It has got two folders within the data set. The first is the training data set. It has got 165, that is 15 into uh, 11 uh, expressions. And But in, in our case, we are going to use only you know 10 people. And the second is the testing data set. Uh, to generate this testing data set from the parent data set, I needed to write a small script and this is the only place where there's a little bit of code. So we execute the script using this command and this is just going to generate a few files. As you can see, uh, it is generating a file uh, with the location of all the images in a bucket in cloud storage. So the Vertex AI needs to know where the images are stored and this is how we will provide that information. Along with that, there is another file uh, which is going to generate. This is for batch processing and this is our last use case. So I'll talk about it a little later. So once you have the necessary training and testing data set, uh, you will just push all of them into uh, the cloud storage bucket using uh, this command. Hopefully from this point onwards, you do not need to leave the context of this UI, which is a console. You can come to the Vertex AI section and all the links that is required to complete this exercise will be available here. So let's go ahead and see what's the next step for us. It's basically to create a data set in Vertex AI. You got a link here called create data set. So if you click on this, you have multiple different options. We are doing a problem of multivariate or multi-label image classification. So we choose this option and uh, we have to fill in uh, a region and then uh, let's look at the advanced options as well. Okay, that's a, a customer managed encryption key. We are currently using Google managed encryption key and um, let's go and create. After you have created the dataset in Vertex AI, you need to provide the path of the Google Cloud storage where all our images are present. So if you recall the CSV file that we generated is for this purpose. So we can browse that and uh, uh, make it available. So this is the face database CSV file and select it and then continue. This process is going to take some time. I've already done this thing, so I'm going to stop it here and uh, and come back. After the import activity is completed, you will see that all the images are now available inside Vertex AI. Uh, not only did it import the uh, files, it also labeled them based on 
the inputs that we provided. So if you see here, we are explicitly providing uh, a label, either subject 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10. So the system takes into account this information and automatically labels them. So at this point, our data set, training data set is, is ready. In the analyze section, one thing to note here is that uh, for the best results, it requires 100 images per label. But since our database is very small, we only given 10 to 11. But anyway, with this, we will go ahead and, uh, and complete the exercise. So the next steps are uh, creating a model and training a model. If you're familiar with machine learning model creation, you would know that um, for your defined data set, you need to keep testing those data set with different algorithms like a uh, random forest or uh, you know, artificial neural network or um, uh, an SVM and then keep tuning your hyperparameters for different iterations until it fits your data set and gets you the best prediction rate. Now, we can avoid all that thing by just choosing the auto ML option. These are high quality models which are already created by Google and um, uh, generally requires very little effort from a training perspective. Uh, but if you do have a requirement to train your model in a custom way, you can always choose this. But for now, we will choose auto ML option and let's continue. At this point, you can you know split your database as a training set and cross validation set and then also a testing set. I'll just skip this option for now. The important thing is the budget hours for training. Training a model is generally a time consuming as well as um, resource heavy activity. Uh, the minimum number of hours that you can uh, train the model is 8 and the maximum is 800 hours. And it does not mean that a single machine runs your um, model for 8 hours. It is, I think it's a, somewhere close to 100 different N1 nodes, um, you know, run parallelly to, to train your model. So you actually can get this result in within 30 minutes. After your training and testing is completed, you can come to the evaluate section to see the performance of your model. There are a couple of new terminologies used here, like average precision, recall, accuracy, and also confusion metrics. Let's get into a little bit of theory to understand it a bit more better. Let's understand some of the basics of positives and negatives. This is our input space and this is our predicted space. And the subject that we are interested in is this person. Now, when this person is checked against the system and if the system predicts it correctly as the same person, then it is a true positive. If this person is identified as a different person, it's called as a false negative. If uh, an altogether a different person is identified as the person in the context, then that's called as a false positive. And if this person is identified as himself, then that's called as a true negative. It is true negative because the subject that is in, in the context is currently uh, this person. So basically, yes, this person is being identified correctly by the system. He is not adversely contributing to, uh, you know, the, the prediction rate of this person. Now, with these things in place, let's define those terms that we see. So the accuracy is the total true positive and the true negative over the entire uh, test space, okay, which includes all the positives and the negatives. Recall is the measure of true positives and you are penalized for uh, predicting uh, incorrectly the false negatives. Okay. Similarly, precision is again a measure of the true positives taking into consideration all the uh, false positives that the system might have. Uh, identify. The next step is to deploy the model as an endpoint and then test it with a data set that was never shown to the system. Let's go. So there is an option here called deploy to endpoint. I'm clicking on this and you need to provide the name of the endpoint. Um, so new endpoint. And it is possible to deploy multiple models to a single endpoint. And if you have multiple models, then you can traffic split them based on you know how many how much request you want to send to each model. However, it's in, in our case there's only one model, we'll have to have mandatorily 100 percent of the request going to that model. We also need to mention the number of compute nodes which will be used for serving purpose. So I think one node with one VM should be good enough. And that's it. You know, let's test our model. Um, so we'll choose this and let's see subject two is what we have chosen. And it has identified the person as subject two with 85% accuracy. Let's try a few more images. Uh, maybe a blinking one. Okay, so that's subject 10 with 85.9% accuracy and let's try one more 
five piece. And that was subject three with an eighty-seven point seven percent accuracy. So you can see that uh, the model is actually behaving quite well. There is also a dashboard that gives you details about the prediction per second. I'm gonna you see there's some activities in the last one hour, and um, it is giving you the performance of predictions per second. Uh, prediction error percentage. So right now it was zero because it predicted everything correctly, and also the number of requests per second since it's deployed as, as an API endpoint, and um, all the requests uh, were uh, 200 okay. So that's what the HTTP status request that you see. Up until now we have deployed the model as an HTTP endpoint. Now let's look at how can any application consume this service as a REST API. There is a sample request here. You first authenticate yourself against the gcloud SDK, then create a JSON file which will hold your image uh, input object, and then finally have few variables set up to, to define where the uh, endpoint is, and that's a unique code that you give here along with your project ID. And then finally you create a curl request. Just as an extension, if you were to use this in a Python application, it would look something similar to this. We'll leave the link of the sample code um, in the description. Previously, we deployed the model as an API endpoint, best suited for consuming it from application with a single image. But it is also possible to, uh, to do a batch processing for multiple images in one shot. Let's look at it now. So from the main menu, you can come to batch predictions and create a, a new batch. Um, you have to provide a JSON line formatted uh, file which has the input image locations. And if you recall from our first discussion, there was um, the input to the batch predictor is a JSON line file. Uh, in a JSON line file, each individual line is a valid JSON object. And it has to be exactly in this format in which you mention the uh, the location of the images in cloud storage and then the MIME type is image and like this every individual line is one input image and you can have hundreds of image as, uh, as part of the batch. Uh, let's look at the output of this which, has, which I have already generated. So this is for example the first uh, output of the first uh, image. So let's copy this one and let's prettify this object a little bit. Um, make pretty. So you will see that we are looking for the second subject and it has predicted with an 84.9% confidence that this is the same same person. And similarly, let's look at another uh, object, the second one. And can make pretty. So this time we have the subject four, which has been predicted with a 97.8% uh, accuracy. So like this, you can um, you know do multiple images, hundreds of images in one. Let's come to the summary and the results of the experiment that we did. We acquired a face database from Yale University's website. Uh, we created a data set within Vertex AI. We let the system choose or create a model by itself by choosing AutoML model. We allocated certain uh, node hours for training that model. And then we deployed this model as a uh, API endpoint. And then we also saw how we can consume it we also tested it with a the inbuilt UI, and the accuracy was pretty good. Um, then we finally uh, learned how to, you know, create multiple batch processing or batch prediction. It, everything that is marked as red is what we visited in the Vertex AI screen within GCP. Now, coming specifically to the to the results or the the objective of my exercise was to compare it with something that I did 20 years back in college. And uh, in my opinion, this is a great uh, results that, that I see. Uh, my predictions were 100%. As you can see, the confusion matrix did not, you know, miscalculate or mispredict any of the, the subjects as which were you know, given for the test. Uh, I had an overall uh, precision of 100% with a recall rate of 90% under the confidence uh, threshold of 0.5 or 50%. So overall, I'm very, very satisfied and happy with the results and I, I do uh, request you to you know have a look at Vertex AI and its capability. It's it's really really amazing.